Linny is getting his first rerun, so we're going to talk about everything new that's changed with him from his new best in slot artifact sets, how he works with Chevreuse, Farina. I'm also going to give you my new secret favorite Linny team that you might not have even heard about. And after we talk about everything that's changed with Linny, I'm going to give you my rant on the state of Pyro at the moment, which I think is especially relevant given that Natlin, the Pyro region, is coming up very soon. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. I also want to give a big thank you to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. It really helps, especially during the slower parts of Genshin, where interest just isn't as high, so the views aren't as high. Thank you all very much. I will be adding new Patreon exclusive content coming very soon. There's going to be some very long and very in-depth videos that should be pretty fun to watch, but I think they're just going to be too long to be regular YouTube content. So keep an eye out for that, and I'll let you know as soon as the first one is ready. Let's get into it. I did want to start off with Linny's new best in slot changes. So Jamie, if you guys don't know, he's a great theory crafter and content creator. He makes tons of great content. We don't always agree on everything, but I think it's very important that you watch content creators that are not afraid to have an opinion. And Jamie and I are both content creators that aren't afraid to have an opinion. And oftentimes we end up on different sides of an opinion. And I think it's very valuable for you to listen to, to people like that. And he made a very, very good point in one of his recent videos where the way Linny's damage stacking works is you're often going to get more damage out of a two-piece, two-piece artifact set rather than a four-piece. And that's because, well, there's a few reasons for that, but the main one, or one of the more important ones, is that the way say Hunter works is his skill, or his Grim Malkin hat, snapshots the buffs that are currently in place. And the say is a ramping crit rate buff, so your skill, which is a very large part of your damage, might not actually get the four-piece effect fully stacked. And as such, there's a chance that you'll actually have just better damage overall with your regular set. Now, if you are using a Farina team, obviously Marishize is going to be the best in slot set. But if you're not, then two piece, two piece is probably your best. Now, personally, I didn't increase, I didn't notice like some big increase in damage of any kind going from Marishize to two piece, two piece. But my Marishize just happens to be really, really good and also happens to have a lot of crit rates. So my damage increase was, you know, not particularly noticeable to me. They feel about the same. But I think this is really good to know that a two piece, two piece can feel about the same as an artifact set that gives insane stats such as these. So if you're someone who, you know, if you, if, you, if your best set is Marish say, then I think you can still go for it. Just make sure, just be aware that it might not be your best. And if you have better stats on a two piece, two piece, that's what you should almost definitely be going with. I also just want to give an overview of artifact of, of weapons. Um, obviously his, his five star is his best in the slot, you know, naturally, but Thundering Pulse, Aqua Simulacra, well, Aqua Simulacra being second, Thundering Pulse, Skyward Heart, Amos Bow are also very good options. And Finale of the Deep is his best four star option. That's the Fontaine Craftable. So just as a ref just as a quick refresher, in case you don't want to watch my entire other guide uh, for talents, you want to focus on his normal attack and skill. And a lot of people wanted to know constellations versus like C1 or weapon. Now, I would definitely in general recommend his C1. It's less average pulls. This current weapon banner is much worse. And there's a chance that you already have Aqua Simulacra, Thundering Pulse, Amos Bow, or Skyward harp and if you have one of those weapons do I, ha I think i have a skyward harp that i haven't leveled oh no i don't but anyways if you have one of those weapons then the damage increase from his c1 is going to be bigger than his weapon there are situations where his weapon is a bigger increase in general though i'd recommend his c1 it also gives you a bit more front load which is really really good um that means you're going to be doing more damage early in your look in your rotation so generally i recommend a c1 but there is a very nice case to be made by how drippy his bow is to me lenny just he doesn't look like a complete character with like looks wise it doesn't look like a complete character without his bow for me his bow is like a part of his kit like a part of his look um a really big part of his look for me so i would personally go for his what his bow over over his c1 even though for damage i would recommend his c1 uh, but as usual, Linny is a good enough character that you don't need either to get good clears. So don't feel pressured, but yeah, just something to think about. Next is going to be his teams. I've gotten the peak fastest clears with Farina teams. And I think it's important. Well, before I even talk about the specific teams, I do want to talk a little bit about what kind of Linny player I am. So I 
am not a filthy Linny min-maxer. If you are a filthy Linny min-maxer and you like to speed run and you like to do all that stuff, I think I still have valuable information to share, but I think that the weight of your, I think some, watching someone like Jamie or someone like Jay Stern will have better things to share with how to min-max his damage, how to do proper rotations, how to do all this stuff. For me, I'm a bit more of a casual. I'm a bit more of a masher. You guys know that we're mashers at heart here. So even though I do sometimes reset for good clears, it's not something I really enjoy doing. I prefer just to run a good comfy team that does great damage and that feels fun and comfy to play. Now, Farina Linny is not that. Farina Linny is reset impact, uh, at least for most people. So you have the trifecta of no shielder Linny with standing in Bennett's circle, which applies power to you, which makes you more susceptible to being damaged and you know elemental reacted on. And you also have Farina draining your HP. So you're very, very susceptible to just being one shot or just dying. But I do think that Farina has peak clears here. If you're able to do a double swirl with Kazua and Farina, which you definitely can, um, you're able to just get insane, insane damage, to be honest. So I do recommend keeping this in your back pocket if you're a Linny main and having this available, but I do not think that it is so far and away his best team that I would recommend playing. It's definitely not the Linny team that I would play if I was just have, trying to have a good time. Now we've got his traditional teams, which with Mono Pyra, with Shangling Bennett, I think this team is still very good in AoE. I think the Freyan team is slightly better. Um, it has a better ceiling, but I do think that this team is still very, very good and it's what contender for his best AoE team. Um, I think as soon as you start putting defensive utility into this team, I stop liking it as much. Maybe in, because you lose the AoE from Shang Ling and you just lose a lot of damage potential. So I'm not the biggest fan of the Linny Mono Pyro with a shielder, whether that be Dea or Zhang Li, Zhang Li. Both of them are not my favorite. They're both good. They're both fine. They're both serviceable, but neither of them are my favorite. Um, and how do they compare to Overload? So there's two ways you can do Overload. You can do Bennett with Shivers, or you can actually do Dea. Now this, this I actually do like because if you, and I will ca caveat with this, if you have C6 Shivers, if you don't have C6, this is going to be a bit harder to pull off. It's still good, but it's a bit harder to pull off. But I really like this, this team. I would say that if you don't have C6 Shivers, this is going to be, at least to me, it feels a bit worse than Mono Pyro. But if you do have C6 Shivers, then it's going to feel a bit better. Now, this is more single target oriented because you don't run Kazuha. If, if the, if the enemies are good for Kazwa, then then the any team with Kazwa is going to be better. But I really do like this. And when you have C6 Shavuz, when you have her built properly, giving the attack buff, Dea isn't as much of a loss from Bennett as you might think. It's still a loss, but because you're generally, if you're skill issue like me, you're able to get more stacks on Lenny, you're going to get more damage. So I like it. And you also don't have to play within Bennett's circle. You're also not affected by a pyro. You have, you're much more, you're much more tanky on this team. Um, it's just a very, very comfy team. It's the second comfiest Lenny team. The reason why I use Yaimiko, by the way, is because if you're using Fischl on a team like this, if you're running with Bennett, I think actually well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, Fischl, Fischl has more synergy with Bennett. And if you're running with Bennett, because she snapshots Bennett's buff. So if you're running with Bennett, you want to start with official charge attack, then do Shavru stuff, then go to Bennett and then use your official skill to snapshot it because you need the overload to proc Chevreuse's abilities, but you also want to snapshot Fischl with Bennett. So it's an annoying rotation. I don't like using a charge attack with Fischl. It's not a big deal after the first rotation, so it's fine. Um, but also the fact that since she does it, since she does snapshot, um, and she also doesn't, like Linny doesn't take full advantage of C6 Fischl because he doesn't normal attack. Um, so with, with Dea, because she, yeah, he doesn't charge attack. I have a bit better results with Yaimiko, but both are going to be just as good. You don't have to get Yaimiko, you know, just use Fischl if you don't have Yaimiko. And if you have Yaimiko, then you can try them both and see which one you like better. The most comfiest Lenny team and my favorite Lenny team is actually this one. And I know that I sound ridiculous uh, recommending double Geo Lenny, but hear me out. Zhongli and Chiori are, are a really good core. And I know people don't like Chiori right now. And I know a lot of people don't have Chiori. So, you know, it's not like I'm saying that this is so far Lenny Lenny's best team that you have to get Chiori. This is my favorite Lenny team when you attach comfortability to doing damage. This team in single target gets close to my fastest clears while also being insanely comfy. Zhongli and Chiori allow each other to, you get Geo Resonance, you get Chiori's two dolls, and you also get maximum Bennett uptime because you can use him last in the rotation, meaning you're going to get max Lenny stacks. You're getting some shred from Zhongli, um, Pyro shred. You're getting tenacity set from Zhongli. You're getting lots of damage from Chiori. This is 
is it's a very strong team. It does very, very good, reliable damage. I don't by any means think this is Linny's ceiling team. You can do a lot better if you min max with the other teams, but for the average player, this is what I would recommend. It's also a relatively free to play friendly team if you happen to have Chiori, because most players will have Zhongli. So this is definitely something, if you have these units, this is definitely something I would recommend. I think that Linny is actually in a really, really good spot nowadays in terms of team flexibility. I think that previously, he was very limited to mono pyro at the beginning of Fontaine, but now he has a bunch of options that are much, much better. And he has good AOE options. He has good single target options. He has good glass can options and he has good comfy options. I, I, um, I will say if you're on the fence of getting Linny, I just want you to know it's very hard to play Linny. And like his it's very hard to play Linny without a shielder or without a without some form of interruption resistance because it takes so long for his um his normal attack to charge up. Now this isn't like oh, I should I should have done that first. Um because this is like you're you're charging it up and it's just so easy to be interrupted. It doesn't always happen. Like there I was able to get all my char all my attacks off but it happens so often that i'm not able to get all of my attacks off because he gets interrupted when charging it's most common with bosses but you see it happened right there and it's not like you need to get all of his attacks off all the time. I just feel like most players are not are, are not going to be able to play Lenny very well without a shielder. You're just not. And I just want you to be aware of how frustrating it can be to try and get good stacks on your Lenny without um without a shielder. It's a pain. It's a pain in the absolute butt. Like we're charging up we're, and then we get interrupted. We're charging up. This time we got one off. Now we got two off. Oh, we got all three off. There you go. He completely, you know, completely uh, negated my my point that I was trying to make there. Let's try again. We're charging up. We get we get knocked out. We're charging up. We get knocked out. We're charging up. We got we got it. Okay, we got it that time. So it's not impossible. Like you can imagine imagine me being a better player and being able to know these attack patterns. But Gen the way Genshin is designed is there's a lot of enemies that don't, they have, if there was only one enemy, you could always dodge their attack patterns. But because there's two enemies sometimes, you often really can't. And so that maybe wasn't the best demonstration because there were times where I got it off. But you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a good representation because you don't always get knocked out, but sometimes you do. And when you do, it's really annoying. And so I just prefer to run Lenny with a shielder because if you just think about it, he takes a bunch of time to get set up to do his thing. And if you don't do that thing, all that time charging up was wasted. This is different than a character like like Alhaitham, where if you have to dodge in the middle of your combo, you barely lose any damage. It's different than a character like Hu Tao, who, dosh, who dashes as part of her combo anyways. It's even different than a character like Yui Mia, whereas yes, she has to do her five hit combo to get max damage, but if you have to end your camp combo after three hits, you still get the damage from one to three hits. Um, fortunately, plenty of people do play him without a shielder. So if you're good at playing without a shielder, especially bow characters, you know, I use a controller. So people who use keyboard and mouse and people are sweaty players, they're good. They're fine with it. But for a lot of players, it's going to be hard. So I recommend, you know, a team like this or a team like this or whatever. So I do want to talk about Linny's value and power level as usual for pyro DPS, as usual for DPS in general, he has pretty good value. If first of all, if you if you can get past his play style downsides, he has pretty good value. I think for power level, a lot of people like to compare him with the other best pyro DPS, Hu Tao. I think I would say this, and I'm pretty confident about this. I would say Linny without a shield is strongest. Then Hu Tao without a shield is the next strongest. Then Hu Tao with a shield. Then Linny with a shield. Um, that is what I would say about Linny's power level. But I think that at least for me, it's very impractical to use Linny without a shield, not just because of skill issue, but also because of how enemies attack you and the way that the enemies attack patterns are. They're often longer, like your animations are longer than the time between when the enemy starts to use their attack and when you're supposed to dodge. So you end up losing damage and eh, it just reset. It's just reset impact to me. So I would say that Linny, but Linny still is very strong. Like even with a shielder, it's it's strong enough. And yeah, for value, it's a it's like it's as much it's as much value as any as any pyro. And that's where I actually want to talk about the problem with pyro right now. I talked about this a little bit in my Arlecchino pre-release, but I, I want to talk about it again because he is rerunning with Arlecchino, right? And 
There's a couple problems with pyro DPS. Number one is you don't need a pyro DPS in the first place. Like having pyro as an element is is useful because there's, you know, cryo shields and things like that. But Bennett Kazua pretty much takes care of your need for pyroness. Or if not, Bennett Bennett Kazua's Shangling takes care of your need for pyroness. And if not, Shivru's takes care Shivru's Shangling, you know, Raiden or Shivru's Shangling Yamiko takes care of your need for pyroness. There's no like intrinsic need for a pyro DPS. Just like there's no in intrinsic need for any any DPS. DPS. And what I would like is for pyro DPSs to open up new and different team comps. Whereas the only new and different team comps we've gotten from pyro lately has been Shiru's. And I think Shiru's was a great addition to that. So I think it's really, really cool that Shiru's has opened up new pyro team comps. But the pyro DPS slot is sort of just pick your favorite and go to town. You can pick Linny, you can pick Yoimiya, you can pick Hu Tao. And I think based on what we're seeing for Arlequino. She's also going to be in the same box. You can also do Diluc plus Shangling. You can do Klee. You can do Yanfei. You can do Yoimiya. Pyro has the most, I talked about this in my other video, has the most DPSs of any type by a, by a lot. We have, and because we, we just got Gaming as well. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on field pyro DPSs, nine if you count Amber. And the second most, every other element has something like four on field DPSs. So eight, it's kind of like pyro is like the, the main DPS element, but I feel like like being an on being a main DPS, like it's something that they're not even the best at because you know you look at Novalet, he's the best DPS. You know you have Ahaitham as the second best DPS, and then maybe you have you know it's sort of between Linny or Navia or Hu Tao. One of those is probably the next the next best DPS. Maybe now with Shivaru C6, it's maybe it's Raiden or maybe she's a contender anyways with with them. I feel like they're all pretty much on the same level. So I think that the I think that the issue is once you have a Pyro DPS, you kind of just don't don't need another one and is that really an issue kind of because they keep releasing pyro dps's <laughs> so you end up just with multiple characters like when do i ever play yoimiya these days what what drives me to build my yanfei why build gaming or diluc or hu tao or klee or Linny or arlequino when i already have one of the other characters pretty much all of them can do vape especially with farina even klee does vape now it's just it's just va it's just farina's vaping instead of klee you know Linny also has a vape team you know Linny has a double geo team they all have a chevreuse team they all have a vape team they all have uh you know all the ones that can plunge Linny can't plunge so you can't use Shen Yun, but they all have a whatever whatever teams you can pretty much do all the things with all the characters like sure Hu Tao vapes differently than Linny but they both still vape so I feel like this is sort of my problem with Pyro in that they all do the same things in in different ways and is this a problem per se no but I like it when new team comps are around and I think that it's just the fact that there's so many it's if you happen to like Yoimiya and Hu Tao and Arlequino and you pull for all three of them it doesn't actually progress your account because you just are getting more different options that end up doing the same thing and that doesn't help you clear the abyss faster it doesn't even give you more options or ways to clear the abyss and so it punishes people who want to build multiple of these characters it's fine for people who don't who don't care right that's not a problem but it's sort of like for people who want to build multiple characters, you don't have as many options. And this is also, you know, you could look at this from the other direction and say, you know what? It's actually great that Linny, that all the teams that Pyro can do, Linny can pretty much do. All the teams that Pyro can do, Arlequino can pretty much do. All the teams that Pyro can do, Hu Tao can do, Yoimiya can do. They all do all the things. So just pick your favorite and invest into one. And it's free to play friendly in that sense that you just need one Pyro DPS and you can do all the things. I think that there's an argument made, made that that's a great thing and that you have lots of options for it. But I do think that it's a little bit boring that they can all do all the things. But then again, some of them are a bit better. And you might feel that this is wishy-washy, but I think it is important to give a, a more nuanced take with all the different sides. Like I'm kind of debating myself, right? Where do I land on all of this? My official opinion is that I'm just sad that Yoimiya doesn't have a real niche. That's that's my official opinion. My official opinion is that, no, my actual official opinion is that I do think overall that this is fine, especially because they all sort of have their, their niches. They all sort of have their pros and cons. And even though they all do the same thing, 
thing. They all do different things better or worse or a little bit differently. And I think that's pretty cool. So I think if you sort of take a simplistic approach, which I kind of was at the beginning, I guess I'll say this. I started off making this, this section of the video thinking that I was going to talk about how much of a problem this is, that they all do the same thing and that they're all whatever. But now after just vocalizing my opinions and thinking about it more, I've kind of decided that they actually are pretty different. Like, yeah, they all do the same things, but they all have their own niche. Like Hu Tao is a little bit better in her specific niche. Linny is a little bit better in his specific niche. So is Gaming. So is D Luke. And we'll see what Arlequino ends up being. Um, the only one is I gotta I gotta play more Yoimiya and farm more for Yoimiya because I feel like Yoimiya is the one that's kind of left out and that is just a little bit undertuned compared to the other characters. But I but there is still a problem, and I think the problem is that now we're getting Arlequino. It's another character. How could she not overlap with one of these niches? We're gonna find out. I'm gonna be testing her as soon as I get access to her early. I'm gonna be testing her with every single character that it makes sense to test her with. So make sure you subscribe for that. And then of course we have to consider that Natlin is coming up really, really soon. And I feel like they struck gold with the Hydro Sovereign concept because now they have two big characters. Like we've got the Ar Hydro Archon and the Hydro Sovereign. And I just feel like they're gonna wanna play up this idea and do Pyro Archon and Pyro Sovereign. And are they really not gonna introduce one of them as a Pyro DPS? Like Pyro is so many DPSs. People, people li like, there's a reason why there's so many DPSs. People like DPSs because if that's your favorite character you want to see them on field i feel like there's no way both the pyro archon and the pyro sovereign are off field characters only because people are going to sim for them they're going to want to play them and i feel like the pyro problem is that the more dps's we get the less special each of them is and yes they're amazingly finding these different niches but i just feel like at some point people are going to be like ah i already have a pyro dps and i think we might be there with our lakino but people are so hyped for our lakino that it almost doesn't matter and we'll have to see we'll have to see how Arlequino ends up really being and we'll have to see if this becomes more of a problem because I think although they've done a solid job up till now there definitely are some casualties like Yoimiya and Yanfei are characters that don't really have their specific niche and they've kind of been forced out because of the amount of pyro DPSs like if Hu Tao didn't exist Yoimiya could have more of a niche kind of thing so overall this is what I see the biggest problem being with Arlequino coming out and with the future multiple pyro characters that we're likely going to have coming out what are they going to do with pyro um just like I tested Lenny with all his all his new teams to make sure that I gave you my best opinion on everything I'm going to do the same with Arlequino so let me know your thoughts um should you get Lenny or should you get Arlequino you'll really have to wait for my Arlequino guide because I haven't played Arlequino yet so that's what it'll all come down to so let me know your thoughts take care bye for now